Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Master, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. That familiar declaration from the angel of the Lord to the shepherds on the night that Jesus was born is recorded early in the Gospel of Luke. That's Luke chapter 2. And lest you think that we are in the Christmas season, the Advent and Christmas season, um, yes, we are still in this October month. Those shepherds hastily made their way to Bethlehem that night, and when they had seen what God had done, and were full participants in that glorious night. The gospel tells us that they returned. They glorified and praised God for all they had heard and seen. In our year of walking through the gospel of Luke, our year C in the lectionary, year A is Matthew, year B is Mark, your C is basically Luke. In all of that time, we have witnessed one person after another touched by the hand of God. And then they turn around and they declare what God has done. Our theme for this extended season after Pentecost, the summer green season, has been declare, declare what God has done. That's been in our bulletins each week. It comes out of the gospel lesson some 16 weeks ago on that second week after Pentecost where Jesus told the Gerasene man, that man who had been running around the tombs without any clothes on, the man who had just been freed from the oppression of an entire legion of demons, God tells him, Jesus tells him to go and declare what God has done. He wants to follow Jesus. He wants to tag along with Jesus, but Jesus tells him to go and declare what God has done. And that's where we got our theme from all summer long. Now we have six more weeks left in our season after Pentecost. If you're wondering if I'm pushing this whole Christmas thing with the Luke 2 reference today. No matter the season, God has done great things. And the nature of God's goodness is that it is to be shared and not kept to ourselves. When God does great things, you can't help but run away sharing the good news in word and in deed. In our gospel text for this day, it seems that only one out of the ten lepers who were healed by Jesus returned and gave thanks for the ways in which their lives had miraculously changed. We never hear any more about the other nine and what they did with their news. Once again, even for this one Samaritan who returned to Jesus, Jesus told him to get up and go on your way. This man's faith, which had budded within him and had grown by leaps and bounds, was a faith that Jesus had hoped would be shared all over the countryside. 
Now, Captain Naaman, I did not read that to you on the video here, but if you get a hold of the bulletin, it's 2 Kings 5, uh, the first verses, 1 through 15. 2 Kings 5 is the reference to Captain Naaman. He's the principal character in this first lesson today. He certainly was changed in an instant. Well, once he dipped in the murky Jordan River waters, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young man, is what the scripture tells us, and he was clean. Naaman was a leper who needed healing. Naaman and all of his soldiers returned to Elisha, and they stood before him, that great company of uh, soldiers, and Naaman, and they declared what mighty things God had done. Notice in the account of Naaman's leprosy healing, God's work was instantaneous in those Jordan river waters, but there was some dragging of the feet and some pride swallowing going on prior to that healing. Naaman, who was a captain in the Syrian army and the king of Israel, both of the characters, in this, and Elisha too, they all had to listen to God. God is not just a lucky charm. God is not a resource to be picked up off the shelf when we need help and put back on the shelf for future use. God is the Lord our God, the one who seeks to be in relationship with us at all times. God the shepherd leads us into healthy pastures. God, our creator and sustainer, leads us into full relationship with all of creation. Now, in our sinful state of being, we tend to fight this leading, wanting to take the wheel and making our own way. God has been working on us all our lives. The potter, sort of the imagery of the potter shaping the clay. And God delights in this love relationship with us. God loves to see that seed of faith just bloom within us. That seed just grow in various seasons of our lives. God, God declares that love for us. God says, look at them. Look at them. Look at how they're growing. Look at how they're resisting growing. Just look how they're being shaped. I love them. And God takes great pride in that work. God has great patience with us. Just the fact alone that God has never given up on us is reason enough to shout for joy at what great things God has done. I pray that you take an inventory today. Go back over your life. Take the last few months. Take the last year. Go over your life, the photo albums of your life, the moments in your mind where God has been with you. All of the moments of your life. Take an inventory of them and you will be surprised at those moments where God has been working in your life. And you will rejoice. And may you shout for joy. And may you share 